al ishraku billah was sihr then he says wa qatlu an nafsi alladhi harrama Allah illa bil haqq to commit murder if a person kills someone directly or indirectly it is a massive major sin because innocent lives are not meant to be taken by people vigilantism is not permissible in islam you cannot take the law in your own hands and start killing people and hurting people and harming people and thinking i'm doing a good job no may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding so imagine this hadith starts off with seven major things the first three we hear about them al shirk al sihr and murder so one is association of partnership with allah one is magic and one is murder to commit murder this evening we read verses where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of the dua of zakaria alayhi salam he did not have male offspring and he wanted male offspring he was quite advanced in age and he made a dua rabbi habli min ladunka dhurriyatan now many of us sometimes we are married and we don't have children and a long time passes and we start thinking to ourselves that perhaps Allah is upset with me I'm calling out to Allah but he's not answering me that type of thinking is not supposed to be coming from a believer we should know when Allah has decreed something it is the best for us what's the point of having children who will be disobedient to Allah what's the point of having children who will create a disaster for you in your life by being the biggest embarrassment what's the point of having children who will quit the deen and who might fight you as a parent yet you made so much dua to have those children so Allah knows what is better for you and he knows when it is better for you Zakaria alayhi salam made the dua Allah responded it against all odds there was a miracle that happened if Allah created a miracle for him he can create a miracle for you and I how many from amongst us have had children after eight years ten years fourteen years I've known of a case even twenty years later and they were blessed with a child that's from Allah don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah so he says to Allah oh Allah grant me from you a pious offspring a good offspring and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him the offspring Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Tuhfatul Mu'min Il Mawtu. Do you know how powerful that is? It means the gift of a true believer is death. Why is it a gift? Simple ABC response to that. Allah promises you when you do this, I'll give you this reward. When you fulfill your salah, I'll give you this reward. When you do your psalm or fasting, I'll give you this reward. I'll reward you, multiply it by so much and I'll multiply it. And when you stay away from sin, I'll multiply it. When you, when you do something wrong and you engage in istighfar, I will still write that for you as a reward because you sought forgiveness from us. When are you going to see all those rewards? When are you going to get all those rewards? Imagine the teacher tells you at school, okay, you are first in class, you're going to get a prize. You keep asking the teacher, when is the prize giving? They tell you, 27th of November. You can't wait for 27th of November. When the date comes, you have to get yourself to the school and make sure when your name is called out, you walk up on the stage to collect your what? Collect your prize. If you don't want to go to the prize giving, how are you going to get it? You know you're going to get a prize, but how are you going to get it? You refuse to go to the function or you don't want to get up on the stage. A similar example would be that of Jannah. Allah's promised you, this is your prize. You're going to get this reward, that reward. In order to retrieve it, you need to come to us. You need to come to us. Okay, I want to go to Allah and I want to get my prize. Allah says, you know what we call the coming to us? We call it death. Allahu Akbar. We call it death. I as a mu'min am totally convinced that the day my eyes close, I will absolutely be going to a much better place than I am in right now. Why? Because I have a kalima, I have a shahada. I have Iman, I believe in Allah, I surrender to Allah. Wherever I faltered, I seek the forgiveness of Allah. 
And I try my best. And I'm just a human and Allah knows He's created me as a human. If Adam alayhi salam fell and sought forgiveness and Allah forgave him, if I were to fall and seek forgiveness, do you think the same Allah is not going to forgive me? I'm convinced I'm going to a better place. I can't wait to get back to Allah. It's going to be superb. It's going to be amazing. I've heard that He is Ghafoor, Rahim, Rahman, Wadud. Most forgiving, most passionate, most kind, most loving. How can I think for a moment that I'm not going to go to a better place? In this world, I might have been temporarily at the mercy of someone who's ruthless. Someone might have shown me their power by firing me at work. It's a loss. Someone might have shown me their might by abusing me. We tell them, Oh Allah, they are showing us their might. You show them your might. Subhanallah. You never go wrong. People have done all sorts to us in our lives. They've said things, all of us, everyone without exception. People have to have backbitten about you. Why? Allah's giving you a chance. The same question you got in your paper, I got on my paper. How did I answer it? How did you answer it? If we answered it through the light shone by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's revelation, we will succeed. And if we have answered it in another way, we will fail. And that's why if I were to ask you how many of you, nobody ever backbit about you. How many of you, nobody ever gossiped about you. How many of you, nobody ever spread a rumor about you. There isn't a single person including the young ones. The minute you're born, they start saying things about you. La ilaha illallah. Especially in Benoni. The minute you're born, you start hearing things. La ilaha, what did I do? Well, the mistake was, you know what? You were born and you had these beautiful curly locks. That's it. They have a problem with it. They can't stomach it. La ilaha illallah. May Allah forgive us. May Allah grant us goodness. People will say all sorts. People, it's their test. Ask yourself, do I say all sorts about other people? Am I a gossiper? Am I the source of somebody else's hurt? Am I the source of somebody else's sleepless night? Am I the source of somebody else's grief? If that's the case, you'll never be assisted in your own grief. Do you want help in your grief? Reach out to other people in similar grief. Create a group. That's why when I heard about this group and I said, you know what? I will definitely come. What's the reason? The reason is, I heard that the messenger peace be upon him told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am with those who are broken hearted. So if you were to go to those who are broken hearted, you will find Allah. That's the reason why I'm here. We're looking for Allah, the help of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. That's what it is. Obviously, you know what I mean when I say we're looking for Allah. We're looking for His pleasure. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa